Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the talk I'm giving today is uh, some feedback on the Rosalinia one-year project uh, we did. Um, and I will be expanding a bit on the discussion to hopefully give you some more useful information on this pathogen. White root rot, as Rosalinia is also known, is caused by a soil-borne fungus called Rosalinia necatrix. And uh, it's been reported on fruit trees worldwide since uh, the middle of the 19th century. It's been reported by Van der Merwe and Mattia in, on apple and pears in the early 1970s. And uh, it seems to have re-emerged in the last few years. Detritia reports it from Cirrus, Langkloof, Somerset, Western Algen, and from experience we know it's <coughs> also found in the Koboka Felt. Uh, what you typically see is a circle of dead trees, and each year this circle just expands as more and more and more trees die. <clears throat> symptoms. Usually the first symptoms you see is a tree uh, with some sparse foliage, uh, small fruit staying attached to the tree, and the leaves turn yellow. Then when you start digging out the roots, you might see some white um, sp spider webs on, on the root surface, but that's not always present. And when you start to dig out the tree, usually it's very easy to, to uproot it, and you'll see the necrosis from the roots moving upwards because the roots are, are rotten. And then when the infection has progressed quite far, you will also see um, typical white uh, mycelium fans just below the bark. <clears throat> what makes it a bit more difficult is that this fungus um, can also be present without showing symptoms on the host. Uh, so keep that in mind later on. <clears throat> so in the past, the fungus has been um, identified based on morphology in, in petri dishes. Uh, those typical pear-shaped swellings you see there in the photo. And that brought us to the aim of the study was to assess the current occurrence of Rosalinia in the Western Cape, especially on apples, and then to confirm the identity with DNA sequencing. So what did we do? We sampled 13 apple farms in Feliestorp, Algen, Grabo, and Koebokkefell, as well as four nurseries during autumn and spring of 2013. Uh, we collected the symptomatic material, brought it to the lab, and did conventional um, isolations on potato dextrose agar. And that was the result. From the 13 farms, we uh, made a positive identification on five farms in Grabo, Algen, and Feliestorp. And uh, you can see there different oats, different rootstocks, um, but where we found it, it was quite present in all the samples we took. At this stage, I must just make a, a note of caution. Uh, be, the fact that we found it only on five farms doesn't mean that the other farms were free of it. This is a fungus that's quite difficult to work with in the lab and to isolate. So it might be that some of the other farms were infected as well, but we couldn't isolate it from the material we collected. In most instances, the orchards affected were more than five years old. Um, but with these replanted uh, trees, those young trees also just die. <clears throat> no Rosalinia was isolated from the nurseries we sampled, um, but a word of caution, in an old abandoned rootstock block at one of the nurseries, we did find it. So the nurseries have to be careful there. <clears throat> the molecular identification we did with the help of Stellenbosch University uh, we took the cultures we collected from our farm visits and added to that um, cultures from the ARC Infratech culture collection, which comes from the samples you bring in for diagnostic analysis. And in total, there was 39 isolates used for DNA extraction, and those included plums, apples, and pears. <clears throat> Species-specific primers described in the past were used, and a subset was used for, for sequencing. All 39 isolates were identified as Rosalinia uh, with very little genetic variation. And this is then the first time that this pathogen um, from fruit trees in South Africa were um, identified by means of molecular technique. 
Okay, so now if I can make a, a discussion a bit wider. That was the, the information on the project. The, f the question I get on all the farms I visited, so why is it coming back? Why is it re-emerging? And um, from what I've seen, I can't give you a clear answer. Um, from literature, the, there's mention that this fungus finds optimal conditions in soils rich in non-decomposed organic material, like in forests. And uh, Perez Jimenez also states that the parasitic activity of this fungus is activated when um, there's slow decomposing organic material in the soil. So if I take that into consideration with the trend in industry that we want to include more organic matter into the soil, it might be an explanation of why it's re-emerging. Please do not go and stop all your organic <laughs> amendments in the soil. I would rather advise to use composted material uh, rather than decomposing material when you add organic matter to the soil. And the million dollar question, how do we control it? Uh, there's about seven options of which only three is applicable to the South African conditions. The first is to remove infected trees. The aim of that is to lower the inoculum level in the soil. Um, please do not just uh, chop off the tree uh, that root staying behind in the soil is the ideal climate for the pathogen to increase its, its numbers. Fumigate the affected area. Uh, there I must also caution you that if there's any root material that stays behind from infected trees, the fumigation will also not be effective. The, the, the fumigant can't penetrate into the infected root, so uh, take out as much as possible of those infected roots before you fumigate. And like I said in the beginning, the tree can be infected without showing symptoms. So do not just remove the three symptomatic trees, rather uh, remove a wider circle of trees that include non-symptomatic trees. Solarization is also an option to um, eradicate the soil of this pathogen. A word of caution is that it's only effective to a depth of 60 centimeters. So if there's infected roots deeper than that, the solarization treatment won't be effective. Then there's also a chemical registered in Australia and New Zealand uh, called flu fluazinum. Unfortunately, it's not registered on any crop in South Africa, um, but it is registered on, on, on apples in, in those two other countries. Another option is mycoviruses. What happens is these viruses infect the fungus and by doing so it lowers the virulence of the fungus. Unfortunately this is still lab work being done and it's not in a packet at the co-op for you ready to buy. <clears throat> the other option, resistant rootstocks. There's been reports in literature that some of the wild apple species are resistant to this fungus. But there's still a long road to go. Like you know, there's many rootstocks that's been tested for phytophthora resistance and for apple replant resistance, but none has been done on, on Rosalinia, so there's still a long way to go before you can buy a rootstock with resistance to Rosalinia. And then the last one I included for interest sake is that uh, heat, 35 degrees in the root zone for three days is enough to kill this pathogen. How you will get to 35 degrees at 60 odd centimeters below the ground, I do not know, but it's an option. Rosalinia can survive in the soil for many years, which means fallow is not a control option. Um, it has many hosts, like I mentioned in the beginning, so crop rotation is also difficult. Um, so yeah. Your, your options are very limited. Oh, and that's my solution, planting apples in pots. And then I'd just like to thank AOC staff for doing all the backbreaking work and for our financial support by SAPA and SASPA and AOC. Thank you very much. <laughs>